also, and uh, just a few other places like that. But compared to the last election, I think this is still a relative visit. Since we're doing um, a comparison right now, shouldn't we have um, done better this time around, judging by the fact that you said uh, the, uh, the violence has had 2019 elections, you know, was far higher compared to what we have right now. My question really would be a uh, hotspot in Lagos. Uh, the last elections we had in 2019, Osho, the law and some parts of Alimo Show, you know, were actually uh, pointed out to be hotspots. And we also had of um, repeated violence again this time around, specifically in uh, Osho, the area of Lagos. So one would have thought that there would, uh, there would have been adequate deployment of security personnel for these areas. Um, well, Nigeria will always be Nigeria. It's unfortunate, but this is uh, what it is. Last election, because these are the strong, these are not really the strongholds of uh, the, the leading political party in Lagos State. You know, we have a lot of uh, people from the south, southeast um, ethnic group. Um, plenty of them live across a longer line from Oshodi down to Ago, down to Pestak, Amumu. Um, satellite town or jaw and uh, Ajanbadi and all that. What we have there is a lot of um, southeastern uh, people of southeastern uh, extraction will live there. So it's normal to, to experience this, this kind of violence there. And the whole idea is that because they know those people would vote in a certain type of direction, all they needed to do was to disrupt the election there because it's become so uh, impossible to read election. Uh, like the normal way they just the way you have to bribe and pay uh, presiding officers to treat one or two things. This time around, the beavers has actually changed. The beavers has changed the game, so it's difficult for them to rig election. The only option left for them is to disrupt those election so that those places won't be counted. Mm. Before we come back and look at some of the statistics that we have from SBM, uh, let's go quickly to Abuja, where our correspondent, uh, Emmanuel Hijane, is joining us to give us uh, a brief update. Emmanuel, can you hear me? Good afternoon. Emmanuel, are you there? Unfortunately, we can't get Emmanuel. Let's go back to um, Ikechuku. Um, Ikechuku, before this election, there had been some data collection that SBM had done in terms of you know areas that were red zones um, and um, you know where there's more likely violence, previous uh, pre-election violence, and of course uh, now that we're on election day, uh, we're asking um, this data does it still hold? Because I saw uh, some of the statistics you gave, and um, just like I said to the last guest, the South East seems to be topping the table. Why? Well, um, the South is. Uh I mean, there's there's an agitator, there's an there's agitation going on there, and the, the whole idea has been that there won't be an election in you know so-called Biafra land. That's how they put it. So it's normal to see violence spike up in that area, even before the election. Southeast, mainly Imo, Olu, and uh, it's spread into Ihia. Like we've always seen um, numbers of attacks. We've seen um, police uh, stations burnt to the ground. INEC obviously funds to the ground. We've seen violence at, at its peak in those areas. And, you know, um, IPOB has come out a couple of times to deny it. And uh, this can be credited to the so called unknown gunmen. But we know this unknown gunmen can actually be linked back to IPOB. Yeah, so, South East was uh, setting that uh, ele election violence would be high there. Another place that we thought and we felt election violence would be high is San Farah. But so far, we've not seen so much of it. Just um, a, a, a pocket of it here and there, but not that far. It's actually not doing um, as bad as we thought it to happen. Lagos. Kechuku, are you still there? Uh, I think we're having a connection yeah. issue there with Kechuku because I wanted to ask mm. these supposed hot spots before the elections, like Anambra, like Olu, uh, you know, Imo State, 
what is the because they have information from across the country what is it like right now i would really want to know um, to feel the pulse of the people around the voting areas in those places. Remember, mm. there had been a sort of a term order saying people yes, should not go out and vote. vote. Yeah, so what is the voter turnout like? Mm. Because these are some of the questions I would really like to ask Ike Chukwi if we can only get him back uh, on the line. But let's see, go back to Abuja. Do we have Emmanuel Hijene joining us now? Emmanuel, you need to unmute yourself so we can hear you. Hello, Emmanuel. Can you hear us? Uh, unfortunately. Emmanuel, you're still muted. Uh, can you unmute your device so we can hear you uh, clearly? Well, there seems to be a, a little problem with our connections, uh, and that's uh, the same for um, Ikechuku. Uh, Emmanuel, if you can hear us, can you speak? Hello. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Emmanuel. Now, we know that you're in Abuja. Where exactly in Abuja are you? This is my Emmanuel. That's uh, Ikechuku. Oh, Ikechuku, are you back on? Yeah. yeah okay, yeah, yeah. Ikechuku, great. Now that you're back, we were asking ourselves a few, you know, raising a few issues. Uh, the fact that you talked about the Southeast as some hot spot, and we saw that, you know, it was the highest in violence and in security. I would really like to know, from the feelings that you're getting as SBM today, what is it like in those places, like the ones you mentioned, you know, Lu, in Anambra, um, you know, and, and other parts of the south is in Eboi. Um, what's the voter turnout like also, if you have had any feelers from those places? Well, voter turnout has been uh, beyond the expected. People came out to vote. In um, Anambra, Ijala, to be precise, you know, it shares a border with the uh, most states from uh, the Olu Arctic. And uh, the spread from the activities of the unknown government was actually spread into Uganda. So, yeah, we saw uh, sporadic, sporadic gunshots in the village, uh, in the, um, the village uh, in there, and people actually ran away. But we heard that um, people have come back to, 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 to vote. But this was before the um, voting materials was able to get to that particular location. Yeah, but well, aside of it, everybody has been relatively safe. Uh, we haven't had uh, so much of the uh, elect, uh, election vote. The same thing in Nugu has also been relatively safe. But, but the hotbed is around the border town between uh, Ihiala and uh, Pimo State. We'll get back to you on development from the south. Yes. But we understand that um, Judith from Shagam Ogun State, uh, who was disenfranchised, is back with us. Thanks for staying with us, Judith. Judith, can you hear us? Uh, Judith, can you hear us? Yes, yes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, so tell us what the situation is all about. From what we hear, you were not able to vote today. Judith, go ahead. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Judith, were you able to vote or were you not able to vote? And what exactly um, happened that made you feel disenfranchised? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Uh, well, we're going to try to patch Judith back in. Uh, we can hear her, but unfortunately she cannot can hear, hear us. us. We'll take a quick break and fix some of that uh, um, uh, all the problems that we have with our connection. It's, it's a busy day today. Yes. Everybody is online and we're all trying to make sure no. that our information is put out there and everybody's up to, you know, mm. um, date with what's happening across okay. the country. Can we hear Judith, Judith can now? You hear Judith, us can now? you hear us? Okay, I don't, I don't really hear you, but... But go ahead. Well, what happened today? I was not able to go out to this. And the reason is I... I don't have my PC. Um, I tried to get it several times. But the last time I went, I was told that my PVC was not available. And I was made to fill another form to make a complaint that um, another one should be reprinted. So I was told that uh, it should be reprinted before the election, that I should not go and wait for their call or a message or something. And when the um, PVCs have been printed, they will get back to me, so I'll come pick it up. And um, I waited, and I didn't get any call back or something. So till now, 
I didn't hear from them. So I'm just in my room and I've been robbed of um, uh, exercising my right today. Mm. And it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a good feeling at all. Well, well, unfortunately, uh, we, we, we sympathize with you, Judith. Mm. Uh, but, but because you're not the only person who's in this category of people who have been disenfranchised, I, I would like to let you know that there have been some, a bag of PVCs that was discovered somewhere in Lagos um, uh, containing a lot of PVCs um, belonging to people who are here in Lagos. Um, as a voter, as a Nigerian, what, what would you be... Uh, what would you do to try to get government's attention and INEX attention to the fact that many people have been disenfranchised and something needs to be done now uh, before we get to another election cycle? Because, of course, uh, you've missed out on this one. Uh, unfortunately, I, think I don't was, think uh, that Judith can uh, hear us. Well, it is actually um, unfortunate that um, she couldn't vote. But many thanks uh, to you, uh, Judith. And Judith. we are sorry that you could not actually cast your ballot yeah. today. And like uh, Marian said, uh, it actually affected the several um, Nigerians. The, yeah. the, I, I imagine the PVCs that were all packed in one place today. And those people had actually gone to INEC offices several times just to get their PVCs. Yes. And now they could not even cast their ballot. I, I, I mostly think that INEC has a lot of answering to do because um, yes um, if you're telling us that no third party is allowed to pick up PVCs mm. and these PVCs we started by hearing stories like oh a man showed up at my house and asked me what party I'm going to be voting for mm. uh, and then he said oh, are you are you this and this person and I said yes well we have your PVC are you voting for us mm -hmm. Mm. How did the PVCs get into the hands of these people? INEC so again, INEC needs, I, I, I don't know if it's okay to use the term, heads have to roll, because this is a, 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 a really serious corruption Critical case, term, yeah. and this is a, an, an act that is against the rights of every single Nigerian whose PVC mm. has gotten right, into the hands of the wrong Emmanuel people. We have Emmanuel right now. Emmanuel, thanks for joining us. Emmanuel, can you hear us? Yes, clearly, I can hear you clearly. All right, uh, so tell us what's happened at your location, um, where exactly are you at, and then bring us up to speed. Okay, uh, presently I'm at the National Coalition Center in Abuja. But before then, I, I went around my area, uh, around Kubwa, you know, in the FCT, and uh, voting started there quite early this morning. The materials arrived in time, and the people turned out in mass, massively to vote for candidates of their choice. Um, as at the time I left, the security, the security situation was calm, and everybody was going about their voting business. Um, apart from in LEA Ward 2, where um, one of the voters observed that there was no ink, voters' ink, which of course, he decided as a true Nigerian, as a patriotic Nigerian, to get ink for most of the words I called World War II in Kubwa. Um, but after then, I now left to the coalition center where, where the INEC chairman briefed the press on the ongoing across the country. So that is the situation right now. Mm. We are waiting for further briefing by 4.30 when they would have gathered more information, then come back to brief the press on the situation across the country. Emmanuel, I'm most interested in the fact that as at 1.40 p.m. today in Lagos, several people are, were yet to see the electoral officials at their polling units. And as the INEC chairman had said to us yesterday, the elections will start at 8.30 and end at 2.30 p.m. And this is 2.51 uh, p.m. Uh, many people are yet to vote. Um, if you have the, the chance to ask this question, um, will the elections be pushed further into the evening? And what will be done? Is there a possibility that the elections will spill into Sunday? Because, of course, there are many other people who are yet to vote. Uh, yes, the, the INEC chairman actually addressed that situation. He said, um, because, uh, of course, he is aware that there are, there are some security challenges across the country. He also observed that, in some cases, some beavers delayed the voting process. And the, uh, the INEC chairman went ahead to say, despite this, that INEC will ensure 
that no Nigerian is disenfranchised in this exercise. He made it clear that even if the even if the uh, election had to commence by two thirds, I never will wait until the last man on the line votes before the exercise is declared over in that polling unit or in that in that ward as to speak. So I think he has addressed that aspect. He said nothing, nothing will stop INE from conducting this election. Mm. There's also complaints about the beavers. Um, um, for the wife of the presidential candidate of the APC, it took uh, three trials for her to be able to be accredited to vote. Um, the vice presidential candidate of the APC was unable to vote. The, pres uh, the governor of River State, yes, Nguyen Wiki, was also unable to vote. He waited for three hours, I heard, and still was unable to vote. Has this also been addressed? No, um, before, before it ended the, the briefing, he said they have been having reports across the country and that they were going back to attend to this report and, and try to see how they can solve this problem. But that whatever the matter that, you know, he, and, and, I mean, at the last, while he was briefing at about 1.30 today, he actually noted that the beavers had, some of the beavers had some challenges. But that the INEC has been able to 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 to, to you know to, to to address those situations in those parts, mm. you know, that they have it. And of course, let's wait and see because he's actually he's actually confident, he talked confidently, assuring that yes, the beavers had issues in some areas, but that INEC is working as seriously to make sure those issues are addressed. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Emmanuel Ehijene, a correspondent all the way from the Federal Capital Territory, uh, specifically from the Collation Center, bringing us up to speed as regards um, some uh, INEX briefing and, of course, what to expect uh, in the course of uh, today. Thank you so much, Emmanuel. Thank you, Emmanuel. All right. Thank you very much. So it brings to question oh. some of the reports that we've gotten from the field. Um, a certain part of Lagos was attacked and four beavers oh. were taken by these hoodlums. And the question is, um, if these beavers have fallen into the wrong hands, mm. um, what is INEC doing in the back end to make mm. sure that those beavers do not work against, against the them. average voter and yeah. cost the electoral process? Some of the questions um, that INEC needs to give us some specific answers I really answers wish I was to. at that coalition center. Yeah, there's so many things <laughs> we'd ask um, Professor Mahmoud. Yes, yes. Right. Uh, we will take a break and then, of course, we'll try to see if we can bring back um, our um, data analysts into the studio. Stone and then, of Kichuku. course, we have more conversation coming. Oh. Uh, this is the ballot and it's Nigeria's general elections uh, where we are heading to the polls to vote for presidential and national assembly candidates. Stay with us. My name is Mary Anna Cole. And I'm Justin Akadonye. A whole lot to expect in a moment mm. to join us again. Stay with us. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.